Welcome back to MKE Gadgets. Well, we're finally getting to work on a base plate here. And this plate is three quarters of an inch thick, 22 inches square. And in the back here, this flange is gonna be bolted onto the center of here. And in the corner, I'm gonna radius the corners, break all the sharp edges, and drill and tap a bunch of holes. First thing I wanna do is do a lot of grinding here, corner breaking and layout. That's not very exciting. So I'll bring you back when we got something to show you. So this is our base plate. I took various grinders and abrasives, broke all the edges, rounded the corners off, one inch radius. So two inches from each edge, I scribed a line and I center punched it. Now I'm gonna center drill, drill, chamfer, and tap half inch 13 hole on all four corners. This Milwaukee MIG drill is my newest tool to my collection. I think this is gonna work out real well. I got an old Frisbee underneath here off camera to catch any chips or oil. And I always like using a little cutting oil. So I'll put a little bit on there. It's always nice to add a nice chamfer there. It kind of helps your threads getting going. I have this very handy tapping guide. And they'll go from 5 eighths down to number 6 screws. So just place it over the hole the best you can. Line it up. Get your tap centered the best you can. And clamp it down. For this, I like to use a lot of tapping oil. Doesn't really matter what brand you use, just make sure you put plenty on there. Once the tap digs in, go back a quarter turn and break that chip. And don't be afraid to use a lot of tapping Oil, tapping fluid. Before you move on to the next hole, find the bolt. And look at that, it goes in there nice. All right. I just gotta finish the rest of these total of four holes. So this is the first time ever. We have the base and the sub-base together. Now I want to drill a series of holes and tap them so I can bolt the sub-base, which holds the column, which holds the bike rack, together. Now I'm going to come in here with a transfer punch and just do one hole. So I'm just going to do one hole. I'm going to center drill, drill, chamfer, and tap and bolt this back down. Now I do have this clamp down here. If I would center punch all four holes and this moved on me while I was doing that, I'd be in a world of hurt. As this project winds down, you really wanna take your time because any problem we have now will just be exaggerated in the future. So let's center drill, drill, chamfer and tap. So with the first hole drilled and tapped, 
I bolt the sub base down to the base. I check for square that this face and this face are 90 degrees to each other. I'll go over the transfer punch and hit that one time. Now we'll go with a traditional center punch and I'll just hit it a couple more times. So I'll come back with my mag drill and pick up this punch mark with my center drill. For that, I'll do off camera. You already seen two holes drilled, it's all the same. With the base and the sub base bolted together for the first time, is a very big milestone in this project. Next is a column that goes in there. That is seven feet tall, and I gotta drill a series of holes in there, 12 holes. Let me set up for that, and we'll make some chips in a bit. So next we have to bolt the sub base to the seven foot column. I have a piece of angle iron here, clamped down, and that's gonna hold my locations. Let's reposition the camera. Once again, the transfer punch. I'm gonna do one hole, bolt it together, and then do the other hole. Now I have to pick up that center punch hole with our center drill. Put the magnet on, let's make some chips. Always grab a bolt to check your hole size, just in case you grab the wrong drill. And we'll chamfer that hole. Put the collar back on. Put a bolt in there to hold it. Now, now it's just copy and paste. So we gotta do that seven more times on the bottom tube and then four more times in the top tube. 